Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Rini and I make DIY home decor projects here on my channel. I am so excited about today's video because today we are going to make some fun, easy DIY projects using air dry clay. I enjoy working with air dry clay because you can mold it into any shape you want and the possibilities are endless here. Before you get started, please subscribe if you haven't already and click that bell icon that way you know every time I upload a new video on my channel. So let's hop right into the DIYs. I'm going to use this tub of Crayola air dry clay for all the DIYs today. First I am laying down some parchment paper and then I am taking a chunk of clay and warming it up in my hands. This makes the clay much easier to work with. Then I'm rolling it out with my rolling pin and you want to roll it out evenly keeping the same thickness all the way. So I made it about a quarter inch thick. I am using a container lid as a template to cut out a circle. Then I'm smoothing out the edges and the entire surface with the help of water. Now I'm taking my clay modeling tool and engraving the shape of some leaves. If you don't have a modeling tool, you can pretty much use anything like a bamboo skewer or a chopstick. To make the dish concave, I am placing it on a bowl and smoothing any imperfection. And then I will be setting it aside to dry for 48 hours. For making the next trinket dish, I am again kneading some clay. I'm keeping the same thickness which is about a quarter inch. Then I am using my ruler to cut out a rectangle shape. Also, I am smoothing the edges with water. Now I'm grabbing a corner and pinching it inwards. I'm repeating this step for all the corners and while doing this, I am also lifting the edges a bit. I'm maneuvering the sides until I am satisfied with the result. I'm not sure what exactly this shape is called, but I want the sides of the dish to slightly bend in the middle towards the center. Once I am happy with the shape, I will be letting it dry. For the third pattern, I am kneading some clay and warming it up a bit. Then I am grabbing a small chunk and rolling it into a noodle slash snake shape. I am using my fingertips and the palm of my hands to roll it all the way and stretch the clay out. We don't want it to be too thin either as this could make it cracked. Then I am taking another chunk of clay and I will be rolling it like the first piece. I will continue rolling both the pieces until I reach the desired thickness. I am rolling it very lightly and making sure the shape is uniform throughout. Now that we have both the pieces, I am grabbing them together and starting to twist them like a rope. Again we are ensuring we are not twisting them too tight and also going as light handed as we can. Then I'm cutting down the end with my precision knife to make it even and I am going to start making a coil with the clay rope that we made. I will continue to coil up the clay rope and then I am trimming the ends with my exacto knife. I'm repeating the process again by rolling two clay pieces and then twisting them together. Now I'm grabbing the clay rope and mending it with the coil. I will continue spiraling it depending on how large I want the base to be. And after the base is formed, I will coil it up one more time but this time I am stacking the clay rope right on the top of the base and I will continue to coil it all the way around. This will create an edging for this clay dish. I am smoothing out any cracks and then I will be letting it dry for 48 hours. Now that all the pieces dry down completely, I am grabbing a sanding sponge and slightly sanding down any grit so we have a smooth base to paint on. 
For the first piece, I am mixing up white, red, yellow and a tinge of terracotta paint. So we end up with this peach color. I didn't have a peach paint on hand so I tried to achieve that with the colors I already had in my stash. I will be painting the entire dish, sparing the leaves and the edges. I applied a single coat of paint and I am going to paint the back side. Next I'm mixing up this turquoise green and a little bit of black to achieve a forest green color and then I am going to paint all the leaves. Now I am taking this gold metallic paint and outlining the leaves. I'm outlining right on the engraving using a small brush. I also went ahead and painted the border gold. And this finishes off our first piece. I'm grabbing the next piece and first I am going to paint it with this turquoise acrylic color. I went for a single coat and then I'm flipping it over and painting the back of it. After the paint dried down, I am grabbing my Mod Podge and some gold leaf. Now I'm going to apply the Mod Podge on the edges of the dish and then I am tearing the gold leaf into small pieces and placing them where I applied the Mod Podge. Then I'm going back in with a brush dipped in Mod Podge to secure it. I will continue this process until all the four edges of the dish are wrapped in gold leaf. Now I'm using my glass rider in gold color and I am drawing my zodiac constellation. You can customize it to any constellation you want. So first I'm drawing the stars and then I am going to connect the stars by drawing a line between them. To spruce it up a little more, I am taking my gold acrylic paint and using a brush I am flicking the paint on the piece. This completes our constellation trinket dish and I am so impressed by how this is looking. And for the final piece, I am going to mix all the three colors, grey, beige and white which will form a greyish beige color. So I am applying the paint quite generously all over the surface and also making sure the paint reaches all the nooks and crannies. Then I am painting the side and the back of the piece. After the paint dried down, I am taking this black paint and to change its consistency, I added 2-3 to three drops of water to it. Then I am dipping an old toothbrush into the paint and I am flicking it off the brush with my thumb. This will add more dimension to this piece. I love how cute this piece is looking and for the final touches I am applying a layer of my satin finish Mod Podge on all the pieces. This will add a nice shine to them and also seal and protect the paint. I am so happy how all these pieces are looking and also they are super functional. You can keep them on your side table to catch all the jewelries that you wear on a daily basis or in your entryway to place your house keys. To make our planter, I am taking a large chunk of air dry clay and I am going to warm it up with the palm of my hands to make it more malleable. I will mold it into an oval shape that kind of looks like a hot dog and then I am going to roll it out with my rolling pin. I will roll it until it reaches around a quarter inch thickness. Then I will be cutting it into a rectangular shape with my precision knife. I am measuring out the length and the width to make it look more professional. So I am going to cut out a rectangle 20 cm long and around 7 cm wide. Then I am going to score both the ends with a knife, apply some water and then mend it by pressing them together. I am going to continue maneuvering it until I end up with a cylindrical shape. I am dipping my fingers into water and smoothing the piece. To 
to make the base for the planter I am rolling out another chunk of clay and then I am placing the planter on the base and cutting all the way around. Also I am smoothing the edges. I am using water to smooth the joints and to give it a clean look. After it dried down completely, I went ahead with my sanding sponge to sand down any texture. Then I'm mixing these colors for the first layer and I'm going to start applying the paint on the top third of the planter. I'm also painting the edges of it. Then I'm taking a strip of paper and tearing it to emulate the shape of a mountain. So basically I'm just going back and forth and tearing the paper all the way down. And I am going to use this part as our template for the next layer. So I'm making the next color a bit more dark by adding some beige and black to the previous color which I used for the first layer. Then I am taking the template and wrapping it around the planter and holding it firmly with my left hand. We do not have to wrap all the way around, we can paint it section by section as we go. I am going to paint about half of the planter with this color. I am removing the paper and wrapping it on the other side and I am aligning the paper so that the edges match. Then I am holding it down tight and applying the paint on to the remaining section. For the third layer, I mix some red, white and black paint to achieve a dusty rose color and then I'm going to repeat this process which I did for the second layer. So I painted about 3 fourths of the planter with this color. And for the final layer which will be the bottom most layer, I am going to paint it black. I also went ahead and painted the bottom of the planter. To add a little more detailing to this piece, I am grabbing my gold marker and outlining the edges of all the layers. To protect this piece, I am coating it with an even layer of satin finish Mod Podge. Next I am cutting some floral foam to the size of the planter. Then I'm taking this faux succulent and pushing it into the foam. And for the final touches, I'm placing some decorative stones around the base of the succulent. For the last DIY, I am taking a small chunk of clay and I am going to mold it into a three-dimensional triangular shape. So I am pinching the edges to make them look more defined and once I'm happy with the shape, I am going to take this aluminum wire in gold color and I am going to cut about 7 to 8 inches with my wire cutter. Then I am going to grab an end with my pliers and start spiraling it in. I am going to spiral it about 2-3 to three times so it forms a nice grip to hold a photo. Then I am pushing the straight end onto the clay. After this dried down, I am taking a small piece of painter's tape and wrapping it around the base of the wire. Then I am taking my black acrylic paint and painting all over the clay. To create a black marble effect on it, I am dipping a fan brush in white paint and marking some lines on it. We want the fan brush to barely touch the surface otherwise the lines could be too harsh. Then I am going back in with a thin brush dipped in water to blur out the lines and to make it look more natural. So I am going to mark random lines on the surface and quickly blur them out with water. And if you think you put way too much white, you can go back in with a black paint to reduce the intensity. And to protect the piece, I am going to apply a layer of Mod Podge on it.
I hope you liked the DIY projects today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below. I would love to know which DIY was your favorite. You can also check out my Instagram at Dusty Hughes. Thank you so much for watching and I will be seeing you guys next time.